We are inside Grays, but in particular, we're in the special corner of Grays that features the Last Drop Coffee Shop and Mimosa Bar. Before this morning, I'm choosing the Coffee Spring Flight. So it sounds like they have a seasonal flight each season, and these just look really good. Here we have the Salted Caramel Latte, which I'm predicting is gonna be my personal favorite. Here we have the Tres Leches Latte, which is, I love Tres Leches cake, so hopefully I like it in liquid form. Then we have a rose cold brew. I've never had rose coffee before. And then of course, um, the lavender honey matcha. And I've had lavender and matcha before, so I imagine that's gonna be delicious as well. Just look how cute this is. It's so fun with a little whipped cream. Ooh, very good job. So the whipped cream, I think what they did is they put salt right with the foam and then the whipped cream on top. So that as you sip it, you're like immediately hit with the sweetness and the salty. That's very good. A balance of sweet, a balance of salty, and the caramel is just right in there. And I just adore this cup. Okay, I'm just gonna go in order here. The tres leches, and you can already tell that the top and dispersed throughout is that cinnamon, which is Tres Leches is known for. Mm. Wow, this is very sweet and I actually like that. This is nice. It's very good. It's also, I believe she was saying that this is made with, uh, in particular, condensed milk to kind of bring out that flavor of the Tres Leches, um, which is also one of my favorite cakes. So I think this did a really great job representing the cake in liquid form. It is very sugary. So if you're not really a sugar coffee person, this isn't for you. Okay, so the rose cold brew, I imagine, is going to be on the more bitter side. I've never had rose before, I'm trying to think, but... And cold brew is very strong, so let's see how this lands for me. Mm. It's definitely been the most coffee of all of them, like the coffee flavor. The rose is very subtle, um, which is nice, but I think if something has a flavor, it should feel stronger. But again, like florals tend to be light anyway, especially with coffee or tea or depending on the tea too, right? So I think I think it's like missing something, but again, I'm not like a cold brew person. So if you're a cold brew person, try it out and then you let me know what you think. Okay, lavender, honey, matcha. Uh, it's just so beautiful. It kind of gets that like milky ombre status. Let's see. Hmm. See, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to like the flavor being really pronounced. And so, of course, like all the matcha so far is kind of floating down to the bottom, but as I sipped more, it's like the matcha comes in very smoothly. You taste it, but it's not overpowering. There is a little bit of that light lavender in there. Again, florals tend to be very, very light, but they did a great job matching the matcha with the lavender. And I think the honey just adds the sweetness to it. But I wouldn't say this is like a powerful, sweet drink. I actually like, I can imagine myself ordering this ice on its own. Um, so I definitely recommend this as well. First two and the last one were my favorite. This one's not my favorite, but again, I'm not a cold brew kind of gal. Um, but I think the salted, honestly, I would drink these three anytime. So if you want to try it out, go ahead and check this out in Minnesota. are outside of Gray's, which is a food hall here in downtown Minneapolis. Our first meal of choice for today is going to be from Soul Bowl, which is like a Southern hospitality um, food kitchen run by a group here in downtown. And so what I've ordered today is their number one order, which is literally called the Southern Hospitality Bowl. Let's take a nice look at that. In this bowl, we have two pieces of fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, which you know I love. Let me show you some of that. 
goodness. Ooh, collard greens and some mashed um, sweet potatoes and yams. It just looks so good and I'm really looking forward to trying it. Mmm. Wow, so it's not, um, so first you feel all the sweetness come in. But then once you swallow, it gets like very savory, which is really, really great. I'm gonna try the mac and cheese. Mm. Looks so good. Okay, some collard greens. Ooh. The collard greens are very um, like bitter, but in a really good way. It has a really nice taste and flavor, which is awesome. And now I'm gonna try this chicken with that. Mm. And so the chicken is on like the drier side with a lot of texture, it's crispy and crunchy, but not oily at all, which is pretty nice and different from what we've had previously. And it just opens up so nice here. Wow. Mm. The chicken is outstanding. And I'm always a fan of mac and cheese. That's never gonna be a problem for me. Overall, very good. I can see why it's really like enjoyable and good, but I wouldn't say it's like the best Southern meal I had, but it definitely is memorable. So featured here at Gray's is also a restaurant called Union Mung Kitchen. And so Mung is really important here in Minnesota because Mung is a group of people, an ethnic group from Laos. And so after the Vietnam War, there were so many refugees from that area. And so Minnesota, became a hub for all the Hmong to come and live here. And so within two to three years after the Vietnam War, there's actually 60,000 Hmong immigrants here in Minnesota, in the United States. Um, and that's such a brave thing to do. And probably the most American thing you can do is to fight for a better life for you and for your family. And so featured here again at Gray's is a Hmong meal. I selected their sausage and the like crispy Brussels sprouts. But you can just see how beautiful this dish looks. It's really well done and presented. I've actually, I've never had mung before, so I'm not gonna necessarily compare it to anything else. Um, but what's really nice here too, is they have this like bag of rice. That's like a red purpley rice. So good in there. You can see it, yeah, awesome. So I'm excited to try that. I'm gonna go ahead, oh, I did not bring a knife, but I'm gonna go ahead and just try a piece of this. They already kind of have it pre-chopped. We also have some, maybe some bok choy here, some lettuce, some carrot. I imagine you can kind of make this into like a wrap of sorts, but I'm actually just gonna try it as is. Well charred, really well done. I'm really looking forward to this. Mm. Wow, this is really good. The charness actually has like a sweet side. And then the inside of the sausage is, is spicy, but it's not like overbearing, which is really, really good. And it's like perfectly tender, not obnoxiously chewy or anything. I love Brussels sprouts. Really well grilled, well done here. I'm gonna go for it. It's gonna sound snappy in my mouth. Mm. There's like a sweetness to the charring, maybe with like a special sauce. Veggies in there. Last but not least, the rice. Ooh, it's like a sticky, sticky purple rice. Looks all good, ready to go in my mouth. Definitely sticky purple rice. Not really a flavor to this, but it makes sense. Rice is like complimentary. There is a really red sauce on the side here that is very spicy. I'm not gonna touch it because it's gonna, gonna impact me in negative ways. Really nice meal, really unique. I definitely recommend it. Southern hospitality. I have never tried Southern, any sort of Southern food that much uh, because we don't have much in California or in anywhere we have traveled so far because we throw we start traveling north. So right here you can see is macaroni. I don't see any cheese part, but this macaroni looks really good, so. Oh. This macaroni and cheese, nothing is overdone in this one. It's just really good. Feel the cheese in it, but it's not like over cheese. It's, it says real good. If you're here, you can try this macaroni. And if you're a big fan of macaroni and cheese, you will be disappointed there's not much cheese in it. But when you start putting it in your mouth and start biting, you feel the kick of the cheese. And the macaroni is done well good. I like it. This one is gonna be some sweet potatoes. We had some sweet potatoes and I cooked sweet potatoes too. 
Oh, wow. That is unique. So the second you put it in your mouth, feel the sweet. No, try to swallow it. Feel it's like washing away. A little bit savory and it tastes real good. I like it. It's like a mix of everything in your mouth. Next, I'm going to try out this big one. You can see it, how crunchy it is. It just breaks apart and it's a skin. And then when you remove it, oh, wow. It looks good. Let's see if it tastes good. Mm. You feel a southern dryness to it. It's a unique taste chicken. You can see all the seasoning on the outside with the crispiness. And when you just eat that only. Yeah. You feel the seasoning. And then when you eat with the chicken, it's dry, but it tastes good. Something I've never tried before with a chicken, even though I have seasoned so many chickens before. I like it. Lastly, I'm gonna try the greenhouse. I don't know, what is this one? Collard greens. Collard greens? So these are called collard greens. Uh, I never had these greens before. Oh, wow. The way they cooked it, you're eating something burned, but it's not burned, but it tastes real good. Now, when you mix that with the green, It's an interesting plate. Mm -hmm. Would I eat every day? No. Would I try it out? Yeah. So if you're here, go ahead and give it a try. It's worth it. All unique taste all over your mouth. We are here at The Nook, which is consistently known for being the number one burger plate in all of Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Specifically, what we're trying today is the Paul Malter, which is the Lucy Juicy, but on the inside, instead of it being American or cheddar cheese, it's actually the Pepper Jack. And so this type of burger, the Lucy Juicy, is um, what Minnesota is known for. And so here is the burger, fluffy bread, but it's very simple. What makes this burger so special is that it's two layers of beef patty and the cheese is melted on the inside. So the top of it here, you're not gonna see any lettuce, tomato, anything else. Um, there's a fun little pickle on the top, which is cute. And the bread feels very fluffy. They did tell us to be careful because it's very hot inside um, because they had to melt everything together. So I've never had a Lucy Juicy before, but again, this one is like a remix. It has pepper jack inside. There is like a pool of meat and juice just coming up. It's very good. I haven't actually had a slice of the first slice. I haven't really had a bite of the cheese yet, but it was just ooey and gooey in there. It's very melty. It's almost like there's a soup inside. It's almost like a meat dumpling, I would say. Very cool, very fun to eat. I'm gonna make sure it stands up so I don't spill the goodness all around, but. Um, that's very cool, and you can almost dip a fry into it. Oh my gosh. Look at that, a dip holder. I really enjoy the fries. There's like a very special seasoning to them. Mm. Fresh potato. This is very good. This is consistently number one burger place here, and I recommend you go in. We're gonna try out the second time the burger, a juicy one. Not the regular ones we used to eat, but it's gonna be a juicy one. I mean, look at this juiciness. It is different and juicy. And the most interesting thing is that it's inside the meat. Like the juiciness part is inside. So let's get a bite. The second you buy this one, with this, it tells you the hard pack is on the way. And also, it tells you this is a modified version of a barb food. It's not the best like the last one we ate. This tastes like a bit low quality, like a barb food, but this juiciness that comes out of this, the way that they cook it and the grilled onions, you give it the experience of barness, but a new taste way. So if you're here in Minnesota, you can try either one of these places. Uh, you might have not experienced any uh, burgers like this. And just be careful if you have any um, heart issues or anything that you need to concern about your health. Just be careful because this will make you go to hell.
Today we're gonna try out the longest taco. The machete. In... Minneapolis. Awesome. So this one is so long. Even we are from California, we do not have this big taco so far to my knowledge. So it's like 17 inches. 18. 18 inches. It's bigger than my arm. Yep. So that you can see right here. Ooh, that's my arm. That's the size. So let's talk about the pieces here. And so, yep. um, we actually got to see them make the long uh, corn tortilla. Mm -hmm. And then they fold it up with some cheese, some grilled onions, lettuce, sour cream. And you can actually have two meat options. Today we went with the brilla, which is a form of beef, and al pastor, which is marinated pork. Cool. So you can when you open this one up, you can see mm -hmm. all the meat and the flavors Layered. in it. So what are the two meats we have in this? So this is um, brilla, which is a form of beef, and the al pastor, which is marinated pork. Awesome. So now it's pretty impossible to eat this all at once. I mean, look at the size of it. Okay. I'm gonna go for it. It looks so juicy. Bigger that you are, the dumber that you are. This one, the bigger that you are. Still tasty. Mmm. All those meat and the flavors and the cheese. And the unique thing about this one is the tortillas are toasted. And it's toasted enough. It's soft and also crunchy. So when you take a bite and biting into your mouth, it tastes really good. What do you think? It does taste good. I first tried um, the pork separately. I think he accidentally gave us carnitas and not al pastor, but it still tastes good. It's still fine. Um, but now I'm going to start cutting it for the taco. And obviously it's not like a super hard taco. Some of it is more crunchy than other because there's so many layers of juice and spices and cheese and sour cream. So it's okay that you're going to get a little bit of a soggy factor. That's just part of the experience. Okay, I'm going to lift mine up now. So melty. Look at that. Mm. It's very good, very fun to eat. Uh, if we have like two or three friends or four family members, they can finish this one up. So knowing us, we're gonna finish this one up for sure. Yes. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. It's fun experience. They also have really good tortas here and other tacos. So Taco Libre here in Minneapolis is like a local chain. There's about four or five of them, but all with really high reviews and I highly recommend going. Oh, hey, you've watched this far. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so that you can follow along on our venture with us.